Welcome to MD310, Medical Care Provider. In this session, we'll discuss sexually transmitted diseases. By the end of this session, you'll be able to identify at least four common signs and symptoms of sexually transmitted diseases, list treatment options for common sexually transmitted diseases, and identify which patients with sexually transmitted diseases require evacuation. Sexually transmitted diseases are very common. 79 million Americans have the human papilloma virus, uh, which is a sexually transmitted disease. They tend to be very easily transmitted from mucous membrane contact, and in particular are carried in body fluids such as vaginal secretions or semen, and some can even be shared through bed linen or towels with contamination. And people may be asymptomatic, particularly males tend to be asymptomatic of things like HPV. So the common sexually transmitted diseases include chlamydia and gonorrhea, the human papillomavirus and genital warts, herpes simplex virus, types 1 and 2, HIV and syphilis. And what you're seeing in these pictures, the upper picture is the HIV virus, and the lower picture is a cold sore, which is a herpes simplex virus, typically type 1 on the lips, but can be type 2. Genital herpes tends to be type 2, but can be type 1. So how do we prevent STDs? Well, the simple answer is no sex. If there's no sexual contact, you can't spread an STD. And that's absolutely true in any symptomatic patient, but even asymptomatic individuals still may be able to spread the disease, these various STDs. And so really, the only sure prevention is no sexual contact. Use of barrier devices, uh, the condom, uh, either the male or female condom, really is the only other viable option. Birth control, diaphragms, uh, by birth control I mean oral contraceptives, IUDs, none of those things prevent STD transmission. So how is it that you're going to end up taking care of these patients? Well. You'll have a patient who comes in complaining of penile discharge or vaginal discharge that's new or different, burning when they pee, painful bumps or sores, or non-painful sores or ulcers on the genitals, a sore throat, pharyngitis, um, you can get from oral sex, uh, many of these STDs of the throat, and abdominal pain, often lower abdominal pain, but in females, particularly when the infection spreads and they have pelvic inflammatory disease, they can have significant abdominal pain. So it's pretty unlikely that you're going to figure out exactly what the specific agent is, unless there's a rash or an ulcer that is associated with it. And then you can use a textbook, medical textbook, and that'll help you to figure it out. Your physical exam is going to be chaperoned. It's the external genitalia only. So looking at the penis, looking at the outside of the vagina, you may find nothing at all. That's your most common finding, but you may find rashes or ulcers. You may smell foul odors. There may be discharge either from the end of the penis or from the vagina. Um, again, you're not going to sample these with any swabs. You are not going to figure out what these are, although if you can describe them, uh, that can be very helpful to medical control. If you describe a, a thin grayish discharge as opposed to a thick white cottage cheese type like discharge from the vagina, that means very different things to medical control, and that helps them to, to decide what antibiotic or antifungal you need to use. The laboratory studies you are going to do are urine pregnancy tests in women of childbearing years who have a uterus and ovaries, and a urine dipstick to look for urinary tract infection, particularly if they're complaining of burning when they urinate. So what's your role once you've identified an STD? You need to talk to medical control. Depending on what the likely STD is, they may need intramuscular medications, antibiotics. They may need oral antibiotics. They may need antifungals. And you need to do a public health investigation. And what that means is you need to figure out who else shipboard may have this STD. And that can be very embarrassing to the individual with the STD identifying any sexual contacts they have, uh, particularly if they're same-sex sexual contacts and they're in a culture and environment where they're not known uh, to be gay. So you need to be absolutely sensitive about this. 
You need to emphasize how important it is that everybody be treated, and you need to keep all this information in complete and utter confidence. Now, if you've got someone with diffuse abdominal pain, they've got a fever, or they have abnormal vital signs, particularly tachycardia or a lower blood pressure, they need to be evacuated because these infections can spread and cause sepsis. Please be sure to complete the knowledge review associated with this session. And if you have any questions, please contact your professor or instructor. Thank you very much.